Well, welcome back to our third video in Common Core Algebra 2. And tonight we're going to talk about basic exponent properties. And I think we're going to be in great shape tonight because you did a lot of great work with exponents back in Algebra 1. So one of our big goals tonight is to review all that stuff you did in Algebra 1. Plus, then we're going to take it a little further. We're going to add a little bit to it and hopefully help you think about exponents in a way that you've never thought about them before. Um, just a little bit of our basic vocabulary here. The um, In this case here, I would pronounce this as 4 raised to the 6th power. Power. And so the base is our 4, 4 is considered the base, whereas 6 is our exponent. And a lot of times um, you'll catch me using the phrase power instead of saying exponent. And, and I'll use them interchangeably throughout tonight's lesson and in class tomorrow. So uh, just a few other ones to, to go over. And if I said, um, sometimes, uh, let's see, I might have a base of 5 raised to the second power. And we'll call this squared, of course. So we'll just say 5 squared. Or maybe I'll have 7 raised to the third power. And in that case, I probably wouldn't say third power. I mean, I could, but I'll probably say cubed. So here we have squared. Here we have cubed. And then after that, we'll actually just you know stick to pronouncing them the way we're used to. Um, 10 raised to the fifth power. Or maybe 8 raised to the negative 4 power. Something like that. In a nutshell, exponents are just basically repeated multiplication. That's, so if at any point you get a little confused or, or you lose track of where you're at, just keep telling yourself. It's just repeated multiplication. So when we want to talk, when we say x to the 6, what we're doing is we're repeating the idea of multiplying x by itself 6 times. So we're going to go in slow motion here. There's, there's x to the 6. That's what it looks like in expanded form. And of course, when we say x to the 7th, we're just repeating the multiplication 7 times. So we're thinking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And um, by the time we multiply these all together, remember, these exponents, or I'm sorry, these parentheses aren't terribly necessary. So by the time we dropped them and we multiplied all of these x's together, we'd end up with x to the 13th because we're repeating the multiplication 13 times. In our next example, we're going to focus on using some real number properties that we used the last two days, specifically the commutative property and the associative property. And just a real quick review on them. Commutative property says that when I'm adding or multiplying two things, I can flip the order. And the associative property says that we can change the grouping or move the parentheses around when we're adding um, or multiplying. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go really slow here in multiplying these two monomials. And then after that, we'll kind of notice the pattern and we'll pick up the paste and go a little bit faster. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move my parentheses um, so that the it uh, surrounds x to the 4th and uh, the negative 6. So really what's happened here is I haven't changed the order. You know, the 5 was still first, then x to the 4th, um, then negative 6, and then x squared. I just changed the parentheses. So what we do is we say that I just used the associative property right there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to use the commutative property. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these two middle terms. So I've got a 5, and then it's negative 6 times x to the 4th times x squared. And be, because I just changed the order, that's what we call the commutative property. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move those parentheses one more time. So I'm thinking 5 times negative 6, and then x to the 4th times x squared. And again, I just use the associative property one more time. So again, that's painfully slow, I know, but I just want you to have a really good feel of why we're allowed to do some of the things we do. So by the time I multiply these two uh, coefficients, I get negative 30, and by the time I multiply these two bases, I get x to the 6. And again, if you want to go slow motion and go x times x times x times x times x times x, um, you'll end up with x to the 6, and this would be our final product right here. Okay, we're going to just focus on some more multiplying here. We're going to start with monomials, just like we did in the last example, and eventually build up to binomials, trinomials, etc. Um, we're going to use the same properties we just used, except we're going to go a little faster. Um, and you're going to hear me really focus on two things. Number one, I'm going to talk about multiplying the numerical coefficients, okay? So in this particular case, my numerical coefficients are 5 and negative 2. By the time I multiply them, I'll end up with negative 10. 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the powers for the like bases. So here I've got an x cubed, and this term here is really x to the first, so there's an invisible one right there. If I add those powers, if I add the 3 and the 1 together, I'll get x to the fourth. And then I'm going to focus on the y's. I've got a y squared and a y to the fifth. Again, I'll add the powers and get y to the seventh. So the two things I'm really doing there is I'm multiplying the numerical coefficients and then I'm adding the powers of like bases. So I'll do the x's together and then I did the y's together later. All right, let's jump into our next example here. And like we said, we're going to be able to go a little bit faster. Ah, these dreaded fractions, these can drive us nuts. So first of all, step one, we're going to multiply the numerical coefficients. So I'm going to multiply, um, and I'm going to write this one out. I'm going to write four-fifths times two-thirds. Okay, and what that's going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerators together to make an 8, and then I'm going to multiply these denominators together to make a 15. So 8 fifteenths is my new coefficient. And then I'm going to focus on these like terms right here, the x squared and x to the first, again an invisible one, add the powers and get x cubed. So 8 fifteenths x cubed is my final product. All right, now, now that um, what you notice here inside this group of parentheses is a trinomial. So now we're going to start to think distributive property. And the first term, again, multiply your numerical coefficients and you'll get negative 10. And then you'll add your powers to make x to the sixth. We're going to distribute a second time. Uh, let's see, I'm going to end up with a positive 12 because uh, I had a, two negatives there multiplied together and an x to the fifth because I had that invisible one again. And then we're going to distribute a third time. Negative 2 times negative 13 is going to be positive 26. Um, now, I guess there's an invisible x to the zero right here. So again, add the powers and you'll just end up with x to the fourth. And that's your final product. We're moving right along here at a good pace. Um, let's see, focus on distributing again. Let's see, multiply your numerical coefficients and get a 15. And then we're going to add powers for our like terms. So here we go, we're going to add, um, add the 2 and the 3 together to make x to the 5th. And again, there's an invisible y to the 0 right there. So if I add the 4 and the 0 together, I just make y to the 4th. Next, I'm going to distribute a second time. I'm going to multiply the numerical coefficients, 5 times 7, to make negative 35. Um, let's see, I'm going to add the exponents and make x to the third, and let's see, that's going to be y to the sixth. And then last but not least, we'll distribute a third time, multiply the numerical coefficients and make a 40, x to the third, and y to the fifth. Again, these were invisible powers of one, and we're just adding those exponents together. Okay, so let's really summarize what we did right there. We kind of wrote it up above as well. But remember, we're going to multiply the numerical coefficients, which is just the big number that's in front of the variable. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add powers for, like, for the like basis. And all we're saying there is that we're going to identify our x's, add those exponents together, then we'll identify our y's, add those exponents together, and any other variables they might throw at us. Okay, this next exercise is by far my favorite, and this will really let you know um, how well you've mastered this topic. If you can do this, you can do anything. What we're going to do is we're going to try to work backwards here by filling in the missing section. So we're saying, okay, we started with a monomial of 2x, and we multiplied it by a second monomial and ended up with a product of 8x to the 7th. So let's start with our numerical coefficients. We, multi we started with a 2, and we multiplied it by a something to make an 8. And I'm going to say that that something was a 4. Okay, now let's look at our x's. This was x to the first. We multiplied it by what? We must have multiplied it by x to the 6 in order to end up with x to the 7 because we added the 1 and the 6 together to make the 7. Okay, let's try another one. Um, let's see. So 12 times something equals 36. I'm going to throw in a 3 there. Um, let's see. x squared times x to the first would make x cubed. And then last but not least, y to the first times y to the fifth would make y to the sixth. And again, I'm just thinking about what, what powers I would add together to make a six. Here's a good chance um, to maybe try number three on your own. And that'll let you know whether you're ready for class tomorrow. Um, so again, feel free to pause it right here for you know 10 seconds or 30 seconds and try to fill it in on your own. 
let's see, what I got here was um, if I started with negative 11, I'd have to multiply it by a positive 5 in order to make a negative 55. Um, if I start with 8 cubed, I'd have to multiply by 8 to the 4th in order for my powers to add together to make this 7. And my b's, I'd have to have a b cubed, so I've got a 2 plus a 3 makes this 5 over here. Alright, we're cruising right along. Now, here's what's going to happen. Does everybody agree that, whoops, 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 that this term right here is a binomial? Okay. And basically what that tells us is we're going to create a missing binomial over here as well. Okay. And let's focus on the first term. So it's almost like you're, dis you're taking 6x squared here and you're distributing it into a mysterious binomial to come up with this 24x to the fourth minus 30x cubed. So let's just focus on this first term. 6 times what equals 24? And I would say 4. And I would also have to, let's see, I would take x squared and multiply it by x squared to make x to the fourth. All right, we're going to carry the minus sign over. And 6 times 5 makes a 30. And then we've got x to the first. Uh, so that x squared times x to the first makes x cubed. Uh, maybe you can hear Mackenzie in the background there a little bit. Or she's uh, got a little extra energy tonight. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Okay, uh, this is example number 5. What we've got here is this is a trinomial right here, so that tells us we're going to have to have a trinomial over here that's uh, missing and mysterious right now. Hopefully not mysterious for too much longer. What would you multiply negative 2 by in order to make a negative 10? And I came up with positive 5. Then I had to multiply this x by x squared in order to make this cubed right here. And then I had to multiply this y by y squared as well to make this cubed over here. All right, now, now we're going to focus on this term right here. Negative 2 times negative 6 would make a positive 12. I've got to multiply this x by another x in order to make x squared. And um, I don't really, I mean, I could put y to the 0 here. Or you could just put nothing at all. You really don't need to put that y to the 0. Uh, but we want to add a 1 and a 0 to make a 1. Okay, uh, I'm going to slide my screen over just a little bit. Uh, now I'm going to focus on this last term right here. I'm going to multiply negative 2 by a positive 10 to make negative 20. Um, let's see. This is a little bit sneaky. Now remember, you can put in x to the 0 right here. And again, you want to add your exponents together to make a 0. So I'm going to need an x to the negative 1. That's really sneaky because by the time I add my 1 to my negative 1, Whoops, my pen's getting a little crazy. I'd end up with that zero. And um, again, I don't need another y. If I did put a y there, it would be y to the zero to make this y to the first right here. So that's a little confusing, no doubt about it. We're going to practice um, a couple more of these. This next example is real sneaky. But anyway, what we have here is another binomial, but it's a, a rather obnoxious binomial. And to organize our thoughts, we're going to say, we're going to put a box and say that's my first term. We'll put another box over here and we'll say that's my second term. And so we're going to take the quantity x plus 8 and we're going to distribute it twice, we're thinking. Because again, if this is a binomial, then we know that this mysterious term over here is going to be another binomial. And so we're thinking to ourselves, if we started with x plus 8, what did we multiply it by in order to create this first term right here, okay? Think about, here's your x plus 8. It's getting multiplied by what? Yeah, just an x. So that's got to be the first term. All right, then we're going to say, okay, take that x plus 8 again. Distribute it a second time in order to create this second block here. So here, your x plus 8 is getting multiplied by what? Yeah, just a 4. And that's all there is to it, really. Um, let's practice that a second one. A second time here. Uh, let's see. So right now we've got a gigantic trinomial. Three terms, right? Here's my first term, my second term, and my third term. So that means this mysterious unknown polynomial over here will also be a trinomial. And let's see. I started with the quantity x minus 6 and I distributed it the first time to create this term right here. So your x minus 6 is getting multiplied by x squared. All right. The second time we distribute the x minus 6, we're distributing it a second time,
to create this term right here. So you'll see how the x minus 6 is multiplying the 2x. So 2x is what goes in our mysterious trinomial here. And then the third time we distribute it, the x minus 6, we create this third term right here. And you'll notice how the x minus 6 is multiplying a negative 5. So negative 5 is that last term, and that's our missing trinomial. Okay, we're going to hit on one more topic here tonight before we call it a wrap. And we're going to talk about how to, we're raising one power to another power, or sometimes we call it layered exponents, okay? Now, before we go any further, just remember this. Remember, exponents just mean repeated what? Yeah, repeated multiplication. Okay, so when we talk about taking the quantity 2x cubed and then raising that entire quantity to the fourth power, basically we're just repeating um, the multiplication four times. So we're saying 2x cubed times 2x cubed times 2x cubed times 2x cubed. And it's certainly redundant, and I guess that's what makes these exponents so beautiful, is because it's cutting down on the redundancy and, and making you know a shorter form of it. So anyway, let's multiply all the numerical coefficients. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 makes what? Let's see, I'm going to go with 16. And then I'm going to multiply x cubed times x cubed, which makes x to the 6. And then I'll multiply by x cubed again, and multiply by x cubed again, in a nutshell, all we're doing is we're just adding all of these powers together to make x to the 12th. Okay, so that's all there is to it. We're just going to take our time, write out the repeated multiplication, and from there, it, we, we really, it gets pretty easy. So here we go. I've got negative 5x to the 5th repeated three times. I'm going to take my sweet old time and write these out. And now we're just going to multiply the numerical coefficients. Negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 makes negative 125. And of course, you can check that on your calculator. And then I'm going to add my powers. 5 plus 5 plus 5 makes x to the 15. Bingo. All right. Now, before we call it a wrap, I'm going to need you to try this one on your own. Okay, take your time and just write out uh, the repeated multiplication and see if you got the hang of this and then come on back and see if I did it the same way. So of course the first thing I did was just write out the repeated multiplication six times. Now here it gets a little interesting. Now if you multiply a negative times a negative that makes a positive. But then if you take that positive number and multiply it by a third negative, now you're negative. You multiply it by a fourth negative, you're positive. You multiply it by a fifth negative, you're negative. And if you multiply it by a sixth negative, now you're back to positive. So hopefully you see that pattern there. We're going to end up with a positive uh, 64. And that's just because I did 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. All right, next thing I need to do is I need to add all these powers together. So if I had a negative 4 and a negative 4 and a negative 4 and a negative 4 and another negative 4 and another negative 4, oh my garage, I think that's going to be negative 24. And ladies and gentlemen, that's my final product there. So we're going to talk about maybe looking at some shortcuts there tomorrow in class and seeing if we can shorten up this process where maybe, if you feel comfortable, maybe you can skip this step right here. But I'm certainly not going to force you to skip that step. But maybe if you, if you see a pattern, you can. So have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.